Good day to all. So before moving on with our next activity, let us have some review questions. The first question is, what is variation? Variation is the relationship between two or more quantities. Now, what are the four types of variation? The four types of variation are as follows, direct, inverse, joint, and combined. Now, what is the equation that represents each equation? Say we are going to make use of the variables. Okay, let's have another color here, white. Okay. Say we are going to make use of the variables m, n, and q. So we'll not be make, uh, used to variables x, y, and z. Say we have here for direct variation, we have the dependent variable v, dv is equal to k, the constant, times the independent variable v. So let's have an example of this. So we have here m is equal to k times n, which is read as m varies directly as n, which means that as we increase n, the m also increases. Or as we decrease n, m, m also decreases. Now, how about in inverse variation? Okay. So, we have here dv is equal to k over iv. Or we can have the equation m is equal to k over n, which is read as m varies inversely as n. Okay, what does this mean? It means that as we increase the, depend the independent variable, the dependent variable decreases. Or as we decrease the, de the independent variable, the dependent variable increases. Okay? How about joint variation? Joint variation is just like direct variation, but the only difference is that in joint variation, it involves two or more independent variables, just like this. Say we have M varies jointly as N and Q. So we have two independent variables, N and Q here, whereas in direct variation, we only have one independent variable. Now, how about in combined variation? Combined variation from the word combined is a combination of direct variation, joint variation, and inverse variation. So if we have the statement um, M varies directly as N and inversely as Q. Okay. How did I why did I write it this way? Now remember that. The operation involved between the constant and the independent variable in both direct and joint is multiplication. So whenever you hear the term varies directly or varies jointly, it should be multiplication. And then how about in inverse? The operation involved between the constant and the independent variable here is division. That is why when you hear the term varies inversely okay the variable must be written in the denominator's part because the operation involved in inverse is division now the next question is in solving problems what process or what processes must be followed okay so we have here the following steps step one we are going to write the equation as stated in the problem just like this say we have um, M varies directly as N or any of these four types of variation. Then, substitute the first set of given values to solve for K. And for step 3, we're going to go back to step 1 and write the equation of variation by replacing the value of K. And lastly, we're going to use the equation to solve for the unknown. Today, we'll be dealing with problem solving involving direct, joint, inverse, and combined variations with the following learning targets. First is, 
I can formulate equations and use it to solve problems involving the different types of variations. And the second one is, I can make generalizations about the different types of variations. So in order for you to make generalizations on the different types of variations, you'll be dealing with different, different problems involving those four types of variations. Let us, let us have this set of problems first before you independently solve it on your own okay it's actually found on page 229 of your book kindly have with you your book a pen or a working paper so let's start i'll be guiding you in answering each so first is we are going to have the essential question how are some unknown quantity solved now this qu essential question can be answered after we have answered the three problems here now, the three problems problems are the problems from different types of variation in this way um, we can easily reflect reflect or say determine whether the given situation um, involves direct inverse joint or combined okay so let us start with problem number one the time it takes to complete a construction project varies inversely as the number of workers so obviously the only variation involved here is inverse so we can now write the equation as stated in the problem the time t we can make use of the initial of the quantity to represent it so we have the time t it takes to complete a construction project varies inversely do not forget to write a constant k as the number of workers w the project manager estimated that 85 workers so let us replace w here with 85 are needed to finish building a bridge in 40 days so the time is 40 days so let us determine k by getting the cross products here so we have 40 times 85 40 times 85 is equal to 3400 equals k then we go back to step one to write the equation of variation so that is t is equal to our constant is 3400 over w okay then we make use of this equation to solve for the unknown. Okay. If the contractor wants to finish the project in 30 days, so T is equal to 30, okay, with a constant of 3,400, how many workers? So workers is unknown, so just write W. How many workers will, will the project engineer needs to expedite the work? So, we, we perform now the operation. You get the cross product here. So, 30 times W is 30 W is understood to be 1. 1 times 3,400 is equal to 3,400. Dividing both sides by 30. So, we have W is equal to 3,400 divided by 30 is equal to 113.33. Now, the question is, can we have a 0.33 um, person? Of course not. So, what we are going to do is, we are going to round up. Okay? When we say round up, we add 1 to the whole number. So, we have 114. Okay. So, we, on, we need 114 to expedite the work. Okay? To make it just... 30 days instead of 40 days. So, in dealing with persons, you are going to round up. Okay? Next. Problem. Okay, before moving to problem 2, let's solve this one. The number of workers needed is solved using what kind of variation? We have here inverse variation. How about the second problem? Okay? The daily wage of a construction worker varies directly as the number of hours spent in doing a job. So, we only have one type of variation here, which is direct. So, we can write this, the equation. 
the daily wage, that is W, of a construction worker varies directly, do not forget K, as the number of hours spent in doing a job, H. If the daily minimum wage of a construction worker is 290 pesos, forget to copy K, for 8 hours of work, okay, to get K, divide both sides by 8. So we have K is equal to 290 divided by 8 is equal to 36.25. Okay, then we go back to equation 1 to write the equation that represents this situation. So, you have W is equal to 36.25 um, H. Then, we make use of this equation to solve the problem. How much will a worker, so we are looking for the wage, will a worker receive if he works for 24 hours? So, we have 36.25 times 20 hours so times 20 so we have the worker will receive a wage of 725 pesos now the wage of a worker is solved using what kind of variation we have direct variation next problem the time it takes for the sports arena to empty varies directly as the number of spectators and inversely as the number of open exits. So we have here two, the combination of two variations, direct and inverse. Now let's take a look at the quantities. Okay, let's define each first. So we have the time T. So number of spectators, so we'll just take S. As the number of open exits, say you'll just make use of letter E instead of O, so you'll not be confused. You might be mistakenly interpret O as zero, so let's have E here. So let's write the equation. The time T it takes for the sports arena to empty varies directly, so that's multiplication with K. Number of spectators S and Inversely, as a number of open exits E. It takes 15 minutes, because that's the time, 15 minutes to empty when there are 20,000 spectators. 20,000 spectators and 20 open exits. So we can just cancel this. Okay. So this becomes 1,000. So, we have 15 is equal to 1,000 K, dividing both sides by 1,000 to get the constant. So, our K here is, we have 15 divided by 1,000 is equal to 0 0.015, 0 0.015 equals k. Then we go back to the first equation to write the equation of the equation of variation that represents the situation. So we have t is equal to 0 0.015 s over that's s over e. Then we make use of this equation to solve for the unknown. How long will it take for, so the unknown is time, so just copy T, copy the constant K, 0 0.0115. How long will it take for the stadium to empty when there are 32,000? We have 32,000. 32,000 spectators and 24 open exits so let us compute you can make use of a calculator to do this 0 0.015 times 32,000 um, equals divided by 24 so we have 20 we have 20 minutes okay 20 minutes so, it takes 20 minutes 
to empty the stage room when there are 32,000 spectators and 24 open exits. And the, and the time it takes to empty the stage room is solved using what kind of variation we have combined variation. So, let us now answer the essential question by looking into the pattern, okay? So, what's the pattern here, okay? We dealt with the variation, 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 but with different types of variation. So, how are some unknown quantities solved? So, some unknown quantities are used, are solved by using the different types of variation. Using the different types of variation. Okay. So, that's it. That is now our generalization that some of the real-world problems or quantities in the real-world problems are determined by using the appropriate variation. Okay? So, I hope you understand it. Now, for your independent practice, okay, I want you to answer the, the test for understanding on page 230 of your book, okay? This is meant for checking and recording, so you're going to upload it in our system, okay? So, that's part of your output, okay? So, you're going to answer this similar to what we did in the previous problem. So, I hope that you know how to do this. And let's go back to these learning targets. Can you formulate equations and use to solve problems involving different types of variations? If yes, then very good. Can you make generalizations about the different types of variations? If yes, then very good. Now, good luck in answering your, your test of understanding assessment. Okay? So, see you in our next lesson. Goodbye.